service will begin in one minute. Service will begin in 30 seconds. Please have a seat and prepare to worship. Welcome to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church of Alexandria. And now for our weekly announcements. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, virtual Bible study and prayer meeting. On Wednesday at 12 p.m., join Pastor Carl M. Johnson for senior Bible study. On Thursday at 6.30 p.m., youth Bible study for ages 5 through 18. Also on Thursday at 6.30 p.m., there will be a prayer meeting led by the Congregational Care Ministry. Then at 7 p.m., the adult Bible study. Zoom meeting ID and passcode will be provided. Join us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church for a heartwarming gathering as we celebrate the bonds of friendship and the warmth of family connections at our upcoming Friends and Family Day. On April 7th, experience the welcoming embrace of our church family as we come together to celebrate the joy of friendship and family. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church presents Just the Girls. On Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., we invite all of our youth girls ages 12 to 18 to join the Mount Pleasant Deaconess for some food, fun, and girl talk at the George Mason Regional Library, 7001 Little River, Turnpike, Annandale, VA. RSVP by Sunday, April 21st for our Just the Girls event. Come join us for Saturday morning prayer. On April 6th at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., we're inviting everyone to participate in praying for the church, family, government, our environment, and the world. Submit your prayer requests by email to prayer at mtpleasantbc.org. The Women's Ministry presents Embrace Your Divine Purpose, Discovering God's Plan for You. Join Pastor Rose Bonner on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 at 7 p.m. to discover your divine purpose. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church will be hosting this year's annual Saturday Night Talent on April 20th at 4 p.m. There will be music by the Alfred Street Children's Junior Choir and Orchestra and liturgical dancers from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church plus other talents from the churches in the FCBSSU. You don't want to miss the performers as they shine like a star. This event is sponsored by the Fairfax Central Baptist Sunday School Union. Young adults worship through serving the unhoused. On Friday, April 5th, 2024, starting 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Howard University School of Divinity, we are inviting Mount Pleasant young adults to join us in this night of worship. Our goal is to disseminate bags filled with essential items to unhoused people in the DMV amidst prayer, praise, and worship. We invite you to stay connected with us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church by visiting our website, mtpleasantbc.org. You can also download our new app for iOS and Android devices. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Facebook to stay up to date on all things Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. We welcome you again to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church of Alexandria, where Reverend Dr. Carl M. Johnson is our pastor, guiding us to change lives one soul at a time. Everybody, it's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the living God. Let us pray. 
Father God, we come before you just to say thank you, oh God. We thank you, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who went on the cross of Calvary but did not stay in the grave. He rose again, and we're here to celebrate a true and a living God. Hallelujah, we thank you, oh God. We praise your holy name for dying for us that we might have a right to the tree of life. We love you, God. We ask you to be in the midst of everything that takes place on this morning, Lord God. Bless our pastor as he brings forth your word, Lord. I ask you, Lord God, to bless every individual that's in this house right now. Lord God, bless them real good and let them realize deep down within their spirit, if it had not been for the Lord on their side, where would we be? But because of God and his son, we can live for eternity. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we asking y'all to just join us if you want to remain standing. You can do that if you want to sit down and praise him. You can do that. But you're here to praise the Lord regardless of what you do. We're going to start off with a song from the hymn book. He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, he is risen from the dead. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. this morning but I just know it was the hand of God over our lives thank you Lord Jesus for all that you've done how many of you came to praise him this morning come on I don't believe you came just to show off your clothes I really do believe you came to praise our God hallelujah give him glory and honor hallelujah
with me. One day, back glorious, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried, he carried my sins far away, rising, he freed me, and one day, And buried, he carried my sins far away. Oh, but rising, he justified, and he freed me forever. And one day, he's coming back. I know a glorious day. Come on and say, living, he loved me. Dying, he buried, he he carried my sins And rising, he freed me. could not hold him that was that day when the sun rolled away that's when jesus he conquered conquered death for my sins one day he's coming back glorious day living he loved me dying he died he buried he he cared my Freed me, and one day, coming back, well now power, power, he's got power, power Lord, send it on down Lord, send it on Until you can then on down, come on, say it. Lord, let your holy ghost come on down. Oh, we can't do nothing till you send it on down. Lord, let your holy ghost come on down. Oh, oh power, 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 power. We need power. Did a child in a manger Lonely and small The weakest of all Unlikeliest hero Wrapped in his mother's shawl Just a child Is this who we've waited for? How many kings stepped up
Good morning, church family. Would all of our visitors please stand? If you're a visitor on Zoom, please raise your hand. We won't ask you to say anything. We just want to acknowledge your presence. <laughs> David writes that it's good and pleasant for God's people to dwell together in unity. Please continue to stand. And what better place to be unified than here at the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. So in the spirit of love and unity and on behalf of our pastor Carl Johnson and our first lady Robin Johnson and the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church family, we welcome you and we thank you for joining us as we worship the true and living God on this Resurrection Sunday. If you want to know more about our church, please visit our website on mtpleasantbc.org. 
scan the QR code and fill out the information and I know that someone will contact you. Amen. I'm so glad to be. I'm so When you truly understand the meaning of Resurrection Sunday, you don't take it lightly anymore. It is also giving time, and there are four ways to give back to God and what he has given to you. The first one is Givelify, which is the mobile app. The church website, which is mtpleasantbc.org. You can text the word GIVE to the number 703-215-2545. And you can also use U.S. mail and mail to the address 6477 Lincolnia Road, Alexandria, Virginia. And you can also now place your tithes and offerings in the designated boxes located in the back of the church. Choir.
Let us pray. Most gracious and almighty God, our Heavenly Father, it is in Jesus' name that we thank you, Father God, for blessing us, Holy Father God, that we may be able to give back to you, Lord God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We ask that you would bless it, Father, multiply it, Lord God, have your perfect way with it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask this prayer, and we say amen. Amen.
won't you help me to call him come on help me come on call him help me call him help me let's call him his name is jesus 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 wheel in the middle of a wheel jesus trouble where he is yes he is friend when i'm friendless yes he is yes he is power in the name of power in the name of power 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 oh power oh he's precious Come on and bless the name of the Lord, for he is good and worthy to be praised. This is Resurrection Sunday morning. Is there anybody in the room to come to bless the name of our Lord? I heard the name called already. The name is Jesus, and he has power in the name. There's joy that comes with the name. There's salvation that you can't deny. In the name of Jesus, there's all things and everything that we stand in need of. Good morning, everyone. This is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I don't know if you understand, this is the Super Bowl of the church. We have come to give God praise and honor for the good things that the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Y'all might be seated just for a moment. Amen. It's just good to be in the house on Sunday morning. Y'all y'all look good too. Amen. Some of y'all got your nice white suits on. Eh? Amen. Uh, Trustee, Trustee Hogan, I couldn't find my white suit. I had to just put on a white robe. Amen. Amen. But it's just good to see everyone here on the Sunday morning. Glad that you brought your family and your friends. Amen. Just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I even got my family here today. Amen. Amen. And so many have been asking, where your daughter, where your daughter, where your daughter? Well, I got my, my younger daughter, our younger daughter with us, but uh, she's with her new fiance, Dion. Amen. And uh, amen. They're growing up now, so they're moving out. We've got the grandkids and everybody. But it's just good to see everybody and their families. Amen. On this Easter Sunday morning, we are just glad to be in the house one more time because it could have been a different way. Amen. The choir's been singing, the musicians have been playing. Praise God for the Sunday experience. When I woke up this morning in my right mind, I said, Lord, we need to hear from heaven. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to dive right into the word and the message because we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, in Philippians Gospel, there is a message from God here on this Sunday morning. How many of you know that when he got up this morning, he had you on his mind, right? Amen. Amen. It had not been for the blood of Christ, where in the world would we be? In Philippians gospel, we find in the third chapter, verse one verse, I'm going to read one verse for your hearing on today. And it's good to have my cousins with me. Amen. They, they, they came down today from Baltimore and it's good to have them in the house and all of you my father's children. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, it reads this way. The Bible says from the NIV version, it says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. 
Today, my brother and sister, I want to preach from the subject, the benefits of Easter. The benefits of Easter. Come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need you now. We need you in the house, oh Lord, God with us. We need your power. We need your strength. I know we made it here on Easter Sunday, Lord, but many of us that are in this building have gone through some storms since last time. Uh, we have gone through some tragedy. We have gone through some, some headaches, some heartaches, some disappointments. And God, on this Sunday morning, I asked, oh Lord, that you speak mightily to those who have come looking for an answer on this Resurrection Sunday. God, we know that you're the author of reviving that which we lost. Now, God, just give us strength in this word. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, we pray. Let the people of God say with me, amen. 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 You might be seated. Uh, it is just good to be here one more time in the company of God. But as we are gathered here today, my brother and my sister, we are gathered I know many of y'all might be going to each other's home to eat and to fellowship, and I wish I could slide my feet under somebody's table today, um, but I'm going to break some bread with my cousin them, amen. That's how you say it when you got family, cousin them, and like mama them, amen. And so on the Sunday as we gather, we see each other, and we are gathering in the sacred space together, uh, but while we are yet here, uh, all of us have gone through a time in our life. All of us have gone through some up and some down. I wish I had a witness somewhere in the room that says, Reverend, I know you're right. And if you have not been there, you might be going through it now. Or if you're not in it now, you might be coming out of it. Whatever the case may be, we all go through some hills and some highways. But the one thing that I'd like to suggest to you today on this Easter Sunday morning, we know the word Easter is simply just a commemoration of the day of resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who died on Friday, as we so eloquently by the ministers who preached the gospel, the seven last sayings of Jesus on Friday. Uh, we had a wonderful time on Friday as they proclaimed the message of God. But we realized the message in which they proclaimed was the hope of the church. That when Jesus gave his last and he says, Father, it is finished. He mean and he said, Reverend Barr, that he's now going to take his rightful place to be seated right next to his father in glory. So that he can plead our case and on our behalf and do that which we need, which is called salvation. God needs to rescue somebody today from whatever you're going through. I don't know what it is you might be going through, but God needs to make it to rescue many of us. I know you first responded, but sometimes we need the Lord to come and respond to our own situation. And so the benefits of this Easter day is not simply just gathering in a space with family, but we also need to understand that God is active and alive, and he may not come with, when you want him, but he will be there on time. There's some benefits for being in the name or being with Christ Jesus. I know y'all got nice jobs and many of y'all look good because you are wealthy and you are buying you doing all right. And, and I see you got your green on today. But, but everybody that have jobs, you don't just take the job because of the pay. You like to take a job because of the benefits, right? Uh, somebody in here, but you have to shout back and say, Reverend, I know you're right. See, you can't just take a job and have no benefit these days. Somebody needs some insurance, amen? And I want to tell you the insurance of being with God. You just can't beat. Uh, you can't beat God and his giving. But many of us might have Cigna. Many of us might have United. You might have Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Depending on where you, your neighborhood is or where you're located, what insurance you might have. And you want to be covered, right? You want to be covered by your insurance if anything goes down. Am I right about it? 
But I would like to suggest to many of us in the house of the Lord today, uh, as we are living our life in this world, I wish and I pray that our souls would be covered. And you know that only God can cover the soul. Yeah, Blue Cross and Blue Shield might cover your health, but God covers your soul. And, and, and somebody needs to understand, you need some soul covering. Uh, you need God to just be with you. But you can't have God if you never ask God to come in and have his way. Am I right about it? And so I just want to give you a few words on what it looks like to have benefits in the, in, in, on Easter Sunday morning or through resurrection because God is able to cover you better than all state. God can cover you better than state farm. God can cover you better than any health care or car insurance or home insurance be that may. But God is the one who has created all things things from the beginning of time and now also to the end of days. And so you ought to be covered. You ought to have the benefits that God offers to us. And so Paul gives us an illustration via this text that being covered by Christ, uh, you can't be God in the coverage because God is uh, offering us today and for eternity. He's offering us the, for the thing called indestructible life. When you got Christ in your life, life would never end. In other words, you are covered by the rest of your day and in eternity. God has a liability policy that says that absent of this life, you are present with the Lord. Uh, God's covering you can't beat it with state form because God will cover you with his righteousness and he'll cover you by the blood on the cross. I tell you, God's got some benefits and I hope and pray that you might solicit that benefit from the Lord because on this day, uh, this resurrection Sunday, he sealed it with a price. He died on Friday, but early one Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Guess what? Power to make us walk right and my, uh, power to make us talk right. Power to put running in our feet. I tell you, we serve a mighty big God that loves you that much, that he cares that much to give Give you his only begotten son. Here it is today. We are active and alive in the house of the Lord, but yet we forget the fact that God needs to infuse in us life and breath. God gives us, when we woke up this morning, I heard the long clock, but I didn't awake because the long clock said, get up. But I heard a still small voice in my heart. I don't care because somebody woke up this morning to the noise of the alarm clock, but others did not wake up. Every seven minutes or so, somebody's dying. Every seven to eight minutes, somebody's going on to be somewhere, somewhere else. But you ought to thank God because you woke up this morning and you heard the clock. You heard your phone. You heard a voice that said, it's time to go to church church. I wish I had a preacher or somebody in the house that when you woke up this morning, you had Christ on your mind. On this Easter Sunday morning, I want to tell you, there is some benefits to being in the company of the Lord. Because the Bible teaches us that Paul uh, wished and he prayed for an opportunity to just be with God. Paul is located in a Philippian jail. He is now, according to the biblical text in Philippians, he is sending uh, uh, his, 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 his little protege by the name of Timothy, and he's sending them back to tell Philippian church that, look here, I may not be with you, but the God in whom I serve, I want his benefits. I want to be in his presence. I want him to be in my life. I wish others would want to be in the presence of God because God is a company keeper. God is your soul protector. God is your vindicator. God is all and all. 
Paul says it like this, that he's in a prison incarcerated in Rome. He's not able to go to church. He's not able to be in the presence of his friend, Tim. He, he's not able to be in the fellowship of the believers like he once were. But now we find Paul writing a letter or penning this letter in the Philippian uh, writing in which we have that he sends this letter by Timothy to go to the church of Philippi and to tell the people that, yes, I got reason to brag on what I once had. Uh, I once had, I was a man who had everything that I could own and everything that I could have. We find that in the third and the fourth verse, we find Paul says, if there's ever, or in the fifth verse now, it says, I was once circumcised on the eighth day. I was a Benjamite. I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. In the matter of fact, I was a Pharisee, and I had zeal, and I persecuted the church, and I knew what righteousness was. By my faults, I did that and everything else I could do. And some of you might could relate to Paul because you say, Reverend, I got a bigger bank account. I, I, got, I got a nice job. I wear the finest clothes. I drive the finest car. I could do whatever I want to do. I got it all. Why would I need Jesus? Oh, my God. I wish I had somebody to understand the stuff that we have is eventually going to pass away. The stuff we have is eventually going to let you down. The stuff that you have right now, you might be calling a mechanic to come fix it even right now. See, but I want to tell you that the soul that you have on the inside is worth fighting for. I wish I had somebody in the room to understand. You need better benefits for the soul. You need some benefit that no man can give. You need a benefit that no one can ever take away from you. You need a benefit so when you close your eyes in death that God will meet you on the other side. I want to tell you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. You got to be covered. You got to be covered. Why, Reverend? Should I be covered? Well, Paul tells us that right here that I had everything but now I'm incarcerated. I had everything, but now I'm not able to do what I once did. And I wish I had a senior saying in the room that shouted back at me and said, yeah, I had everything back then. I was big. I was bad. I went where I wanted to do, do what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and how I wanted to do it. But age caught up with me. And when age caught up with me, I can't do it like I used to do it. And see, some of y'all young folk looking at me right Right now, they said, I got it all together. Well, let age catch up with you. You might have some aches and some pain. You might get hip surgery. You might do something in your life that caused you to slow it down. And now you looking around and said, what's next in my life? Well, I want to suggest to you, maybe you want to be covered by Christ. Oh, here it is now. Paul is saying, I can't get around like I used to. I can't go where I want to go. I'm incarcerated in this place. But he gives some insight to me on the Sunday morning. I don't know if you caught it or not, but the Bible, when you read third uh, chapter of the book of Philippi, it's a note here that says, but whatever, when in, the, in the text, verse 7, it says, but whatever uh, we gain to me, I now considered a loss for the sake of Christ. And Paul has given us some insight to his pain and his problem. He's incarcerated in jail. He's now been there for quite some time for preaching the gospel message. He's located in a Roman prison. It's stinky in the prison because the sanitation of that day was just a hole in the floor. Uh, he's at a place where he's oh, simply not able to get around like he used to because he's changed and missed other guards. And, but he's still got some hope on the inside. And baby, I 
I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through, but one day you might find yourself in an oppressive situation. You might find yourself incarcerated, not in the prison, but between your four walls. See, somebody in here today understand what I just said because being in prison doesn't mean that you're incarcerated by soldiers or by um, guards on the outside. Sometimes life would deal you a hand where you feel oppression coming in on you. You feel as if I can't get out no matter how far I go. My walls in which I used to adore for the house in which I built, but now I'm incarcerated in my mind. I'm incarcerated in my heart. I don't feel like I used to. I can't do what I used to. And you find yourself in a situation that you're ready to cry out to somebody, help me, Lord Jesus. Paul is saying, and he said, I got everything to live for, but now I consider all losses because everything I had in my life can't do me no good. Oh, we find now in the Bible that Paul is at the situation in his life where he says everything is as if it's a loss. I worked so hard to get it. I, I worked so hard to, 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 to succumb to the stuff in my life, but it can't do me no good. And so he proceeds to tell us a little further in the text. He said, what is it that I consider a game? What is it that is benefiting me now? I can't do anything with my money. My money was with me, but my, now my money is strange. My change, I can't get no credit. And you find yourself incarcerated or isolated in a situation that can't do you no good. Oh, Paul says, but there are some benefits. I wish I had somebody saying there's benefits. Uh, there's benefits. But, but, but you can't put your benefits in people, though. Uh, I, I love my wife. She's sitting right here right now, and, and she's uh, the finest thing, the best thing I ever had. Uh, but every now and then, uh, she can't do me any way that I need her. Uh, when I wake up in the morning and I get down on my knees and, and my soul cries out, my, my wife can't cook me enough. She can't love me enough. But I know one person that is able to do me like I need. And his name is Jesus. And I got to love on Christ because of Christ he is the lover of my soul. I'm on my way with this because I don't want to keep you alone. But the Bible says that Paul is at this place in his life where he's struggling with the problem of being mockers in isolation and alone. Church is going on on Sunday, but he can't get there because he's incarcerated. People are shouting and doing all kinds of things that they want to do, but, but disregarding that they really need Jesus. I, I, wish, I wish I had somebody to talk back to me and say, Reverend, I understand what you're saying because, see, see we can be the biggest, the baddest person ever in this life. Uh, and and, and y'all watch football? Uh, see, I was, I was catching up on the Dallas Cowboys before I came in. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and I was kind of vexing my soul, Trustee Bradley, because they don't have a running back yet. Uh, they let uh, Saquon Barkley go to the Philadelphia Eagles, Tim. Uh, they let, uh, they let uh, Derrick Henry go to Baltimore. And then now they're trying to bring Ezekiel back. I, and I was just saying, wait a minute now. Y'all had this opportunity, but you didn't take advantage of it. And, but, it but God reminded me, that's just like many Christians or non-Christian that had they, they got opportunity to have the best running back that they could ever have or the best linebacker in their lives but they, they, but, but they negate him because they don't think he's useful oh, I wish I had somebody to say I know you're right Reverend but let me just tell y'all today the one that you really need is Jesus and I want to tell you, he can beat everybody at whatever they do because he's hold the, he holds the vault of dawn in, his, in the palm of his hand. He, he twirled it at 166,000 miles an hour, put green in the green beans, sweet in the honey. You can't beat that kind of God. 
But let me just tell you about Paul. Paul says, he said, look here, I got everything and I was everybody's man. But he's incarcerated. He can't do anything in his life. So he gives us three things to take away from the tables, Malik. Is he, he, he says that when you can't do anything about your situation, he said, this is what I would like to suggest to you in verse 10. It says, first of all, he said, I want to know Christ. Oh, here, and you might want a, 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 a scientific answer to this thing. You, you might want some super logic to be applied on the situation. But the only thing I got to offer is, first of all, like Paul, is to know Jesus. <laughs> Uh, y'all ain't yeah, get that yet uh, you say Reverend what do you mean that's all you got is Jesus uh, I got the social media I, I, I got my fine car waiting on the outside well let me just tell you baby keep on living you, you're gonna need Jesus and let me tell you why Paul says he said because when you get to know Jesus there are some benefits in knowing who he is uh, through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ he says he told me via his life experience that first of all you got to have relationship or commune with Christ and what do you mean by communing with Christ uh, you just can't pat a cake him on Sunday and then leave out and go back to what you normally do uh, you can't high five your neighbor in the church and then leave out and say I've been to church and that's enough but I want to tell you you got to commune with Jesus you got to know Christ you got to not only confess him with your mouth and believe in him in your heart not only do you have to do that to be saved and that's easy enough but you got to spend time with Jesus am I right Dion? If you won't spend time with Shamar, is she going to be upset? She can be calling you on the phone, where are you? I think some of y'all heard Jesus calling on the way in. Uh, where you been? You ain't been here since last Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> but maybe you want to commune with him a little bit more. Because the Bible says that Paul is in a critical uh, situation in his life and he's having to call on the name of Jesus. And somebody may ask, then why, Reverend, do you call on the name of Jesus? Because when you call the name of Jesus, he has power to restore and to revive your situation. Anybody that got up from the, uh, from the grave, uh, let me just tell you, Sun Yaw Moon didn't get up this morning. Uh, Muhammad, Boo Muhammad didn't get up this morning. Somebody been looking for Seth out the Buddha, and Buddha didn't get up this morning. You might have picked him up and moved around on the porch, but, but you, 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 you didn't find Jesus. See, Jesus, he came into your bedroom this morning, tapped you on your shoulders, and said, good morning to you. It's time to go to church and give God some praise because God loved you that much that he gave you his only begotten son. And so you got to have communion with God. And not only do you have communion with God, you got to have some conversation with God. And let me just tell you what I just told you. The conversation may go like this. Lord, good morning. Lord, thank you for letting me go through a course of the day. Good night, Jesus. I want you to watch over me as I lay down and go to sleep. Y'all remember them bedtime prayers, right? Lord, if you, if you, if you keep me while I'm slumbering. Um, see, you got to have Jesus and have conversation with Jesus. And then you need to commit your time to the Lord. And he said, Reverend, what do you mean commit my time? I ain't got enough time in a day. I got to punch a clock in the morning. I, I got to go to work in the, in the evening. Well, I don't know when you're going to spend time with Jesus. But on yesterday, we laid sister, um, the sister Sandra to sleep on yesterday and they're carrying her body uh, to Nashville in the morning. So maybe it could be you next that might need to call on God before it's too late. And let me just tell you why. Because your soul needs some benefits. Because when you close your eyes in death uh, you want to wake up in the morning because God benefits says I've covered you. I took care of you and 
said, I watched over you last night. So if you communion, you praying, and you committing to God, God will give you the benefits that you stand in need of. Here it is. The Bible says, Paul said, when I get to know Jesus better, uh, I want to know, first of all, Christ. So, number one, you got to know Christ. Number two is that the, the power of Christ's resurrection. You want to know his power because we come in here on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and we sing these songs about he got up, right? And that he lives and we can face our tomorrows. But the thing that we need to understand is that when we look at God coming back from the dead, that means that if he got that kind of power to raise him from the dead, uh, last time I checked my worst moment in my life, I thought my life was over. <laughs> when mama died, I thought it was the last days of my life. <laughs> when my auntie and my mother-in-law died in the same year, I thought it was all over. I can't go down to the church because my heart is vexed. <laughs> my life is messed up. I've lost everything thing that meant that the people that meant anything to me but let me just tell you when God knows you going through your worst moment he reminds you of the power that he has and let me just tell somebody the power that he has is able to raise dead things back to life not my relatives but me but my soul is vexed I'm in an oppressive situation and I don't want to raise my head God whispers in my ear and say get up and go on with your life because somebody needs to see and somebody needs to know that I got power over dead things if you ever been dead and in a bad situation God can bring you back come on somebody out to shout amen because you need to understand God will give you a springboard in life and you can bounce back from any situation I know that Nick Rohan to be treated you wrong but baby you can bounce back you got God on your side he can resurrect from you from the dead I know that situation on your job was bad but go ahead and trust God he will bounce you back and give you life and give you strength won't he do it Paul says he said look here he said, I got to tell you, I, I, I want to know not only his new Christ as who he is, but I want to know his resurrection power. No, God is saying to all of us today, no matter what you go through, he's able to bring you on through your situation. Won't he do it? Uh, God is able to give you strength when you need it. God is able to do far exceedingly above whatever we can think or imagine. So not only does Paul says, I'm in jail, but I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. But then watch this. Here it is. I said, now, Paul, you in jail. Paul, you got guards around you. And here you are talking like that. And so what I'd like to suggest to somebody, when you read your Bibles, God got all kinds of illustrations on how he operates and not we ourselves. And so I'm talking simply about the benefits of Easter. What I'm really saying is, is that because of the resurrection of Jesus, we able to do whatever we could think or match. Now, how do you know, Reverend? Well, here it is. Let me give you the last thing and I'm out. But right here, the Bible says that Paul in verse 10 he said, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection, but I want to participate in his suffering. Now, now y'all, when I read the Bible, I got to have a good sense of humor. Uh, because when Paul said, Lord, I want to know your suffering. Uh, y'all, y'all ain't get it. I don't know how many people like suffering. I don't know how many people like to be in pain. Especially men, we, we don't like pain. Women can birth babies. <laughs> we can hit our toe on the side of the bed. 
and we almost ready to fall out and die. Isn't that right, Miss Sherry? We, we, and, and, and she, and you, you looking at us like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but Paul, in prison, <laughs> suffering. And he says, I want to know Jesus suffering. Now, I laugh, m- m- Stacy, because I, I don't know about that. Digging and like black. I don't, I don't know if I want to go through the suffering that Christ went through. Now, come on now. Y'all, y'all be real. Look. Uh, they put him on a cross. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in his feet. Come on. You, you want to go through that? Because the Bible says that he says that I want to know Christ's suffering. And so I had to go a little deeper and I looked that thing up because Paul doesn't shy away from the suffering. He wants to share the same suffering that Jesus endures. But most of all, he wants to fellowship with the one who suffered and died for him. Uh, He wants to know that Jesus, why in the world did you die for folk like me? Uh, Why in the world did you suffer for me? You took my place on the cross. I should have been hung there and died between the two thieves. But yet you took my place. And that's why we celebrate on Sunday mornings. And that's why we go through what we go through. Because we realize that Jesus did it for me. And that's why I act crazy on church. On, and when I'm in the church, outside the church, because when I'm in the fellowship with the one word that's there, it means koinonia, which means coexist with God. And so, in other words, if I'm coexisting with God, I don't have to worry about the pain I go through and the rejection I experience because I realize there's a promise waiting on me. <laughs> oh, let me go back and get that again. See, I don't have to go through the. Through the cross anymore. What did I look like being hanging on the cross? I ain't God. I ain't God's son, but he did it for me. But when he got up on the cross, he had you and me on his mind. And when he died, he just said, Lord, uh, God, don't forsake them. But he took my sins upon his shoulders. And when he died on that Friday, he simply said, Lord, it's finished. In other words, he says, Carl, you ain't got to go through it because I took your place. And if you in the fellowship with me, I got your back. And so when you go through rejection, step on to the side because I'm right there and I will fight your battles. And the problem with people taking uh, the God's place in the battle, you misplacing yourselves because God promised that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I know you don't have any ability to dismantle a weapon, but God specializes in dismantling the enemy's attack. And I wish I had somebody that when you're going through the attack that you call the name Jesus. Jesus, because it's just like a Smith and a Weston. And when you call the name Jesus, he's able to come, not when you want him, but he's right there on time. He'll protect you when you need him. He'll take your place when you need him. He'll stand in the gap when you need him. I wish I had somebody said, I want that kind of corner near. I want that kind of coverage. Blue Cross can't give it to you. Cigna can't get it to you. Medicaid can't get it to you. But the the blood of Christ is able to cover you through it all. I wish I had somebody that got a through it all spirit. Though the devil slay, tried to slay me, yet would I trust in him because through it all, Jesus is able to come by and see about me. Goodbye, y'all. Happy Easter. But I want to leave you with this. Are you covered? Are you covered? I know you got signal. I know you got United Healthcare, but are you covered by Jesus? Do you know you got a friend when you need one? Do you know that you got an Alpha and Omega? That he's your beginning and your end? Do you know that God is your everything? I wish I had somebody that says, Reverend, I got benefits. When I woke up this morning, God's got my back. When I go to home tonight, God's got my back. When I deal with the 
Negroes on the street. God's got my back. I wish I had a witness. Said, I'm covered by the blood. You might look at me. I may be small, but I got somebody bigger than me. And I'm covered because he hung there, dead, and died. On that Friday, he stayed there on the evil on the Saturday. But early one Sunday morning, he came out of the grave with all power. Power to make us walk right. Power to restore the broken heart. I tell you, I got benefits. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, I'm covered. I may not look, look like much, but I'm covered. <laughs> I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, I may got a white robe. You may not be able to see the stain, but God looks under my robe. And like David, he said, Lord, purge me with his and wash me and make me white as snow. God will do it if you allow him. But you got to, first of all, like many a times in your life, if you get a job, you just can't. Suggest I need benefits. You got to sign up. You got to put your name on the line. I said, I want this coverage. I'm willing to pay a little bit more for this coverage. And see, some of us have not enrolled yet in the coverage plan. Some of us have not signed up for the benefits that Jesus offers. And you, you say, Reverend, yeah, I'm good. I don't need this religion or be religious. That, that, you know, that, that, mess, that blows my mind because you, 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 you got coverage on your car. In case a storm comes. You, you, you got coverage in your job in case you get sick. But what about your soul? Well, are you covered there? Do you know when you close your eyes in death, the Bible says absent of this life, are you covered? And so that's all I come by to say is that you need some type of benefit. And I'm going to tell you, like Paul, Paul's in jail. He's incarcerated. He's in a critical situation of his life, but he's covered. He said, I ain't worried about what these soldiers are going to do to me. And eventually he was beheaded. But, but, but see, he, he said, I'm not afraid because I'm covered by Jesus. And, and why do you come to church on Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday? Because there's benefits in Easter. Because the benefits say that if I have confessed with my mouth and believed my heart the Lord Jesus, I can be saved. And you ain't got to be religious because religion... It's simply doing something in repetition over and over and over, go, over again. But Christianity says that God died on the cross for me and that if I just simply acknowledge and confess with my mouth in, in, in him into my heart, I shall be saved. That's Christianity. God seeking man, not man seeking a God. Because many times we seek Gods of houses, gods of land, gods of everything. But I want to tell you, come on, musicians, y'all, y'all, y'all play. But we, 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 we just need you to know that the benefits of Christ is eternal life. And if you want that in your life, because you got all this other coverage, but like Paul, he said, eventually it won't do you no good. You're going to need some additional coverage like life insurance. Some of us got uh, short-term policies. Sometimes we got these little term policies in our lives. And if we die, your spouse or your loved one will get the money. Guess what they're going to do with the money? <laughs> You're going to be gone. They're going to be spending it. And I told my wife already, Miss Debbie, if, baby, if I'm gone, just go ahead and get you another one. <laughs> Live your life out. Life too short. She, she don't agree with me, but, but come on now. The reality of, of, of what really will happen. But I want to let you know that when you have Christ 
in your life, you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart the Lord Jesus. The Bible said you should experience eternity in glory. Oh, what a benefit that is. Because the other option is to be eternally separated from God. In Revelation chapter 20, it says that those who are eternally separated from God would spend time in the lake of fire. Those who don't know who God is. Why take that chance? I want to open up the doors of the church as a choir sings. I want to let you know that today is a good day to come and receive special benefits for your life and be covered by the blood of Christ. It's easy. You don't have to die on the cross no more. and You don't have to uh, go through the torture that Jesus went through because by knowing who Jesus is, he took all of that away. He bore the cross. He bore the pain. He bore the suffering. And my brother and my sister, why don't you come and experience the benefits of Jesus? And the thing that I did not say that when you, in, when you experience the benefit of Jesus, no matter what hell comes in your life, God will give you joy. No matter what struggle you go through, God will give you peace. And my brother and my sister, if you want to come to Christ today, this is your time. The deacons are waiting on you. Him, Jesus. They call him Jesus. The Jesus Christos, Kyrios. Because Jesus Christ is the Lord. Why don't you come today why, if you're here today? I know today is a special day, Easter. But if you want to come, this is your time. This is your moment. Come on, choir, sing, sing. Somebody's life depending on someone's soul is waiting to see Jesus. Why don't you give your life to Jesus if you will and if you are here? Because, because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Because. If you're here today, my brother, my sister, if you want to come to Christ, come on, come on, I'll meet you. I know. If you want to come and join the church, you're not joining the, the church because of me. You're joining the church because of Christ. And he's able to rescue us. He's able to give you the benefits that you need in this life. These deacons and deaconesses are standing here waiting, and my hand is ready and waiting for somebody. If you're here today, my brother and sister would like to come to Jesus. We can face our tomorrows. Face tomorrow. Because. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. We waiting on you. We waiting. Because I know. Because. Come on, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you, God, for this Easter Sunday morning. Because, Lord, we know that you have died and rose from the grave for us. You give us hope. You give us victory. You give us that which we need, Lord, because we cannot do it alone. You are our covering policy. By your blood, you wash all my sins away. By your blood, Lord, you give me strength. By your blood, Lord, you give me peace and you give me joy. And so now, Lord, we're getting ready to leave this sacred space to go to our respective homes. But prick the minds and the hearts of someone here today that needs your covering. And God, we know that the world covers well, but you cover even the burden. And so, Lord, we are just praying now. We're getting ready to leave Mount Pleasant. But we need you in our hearts and our souls. Now let your grace, your peace, 
and the all that we know and think or could imagine that you are bigger than any devil that's in this world. We live in that truth. We abide within, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Now, God, this business from this place. Bless each, every family that's represented here today. As we go and break bread together, have fun together, God, I just pray that the, from the Easter experience that you remind them of their coverage. Lord, we thank you in advance for all that you have done. And we say together in your holy and righteous name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Go in the spirit of the Lord. Good to see you all. God bless you.